Albuquerque, New Mexico, December 8, 1988. At 4 p.m., Susan Beard arrived at her daughter Sarah's apartment near the campus of the University of New Mexico. Sarah? Sarah, a sociology major at the university, had not responded to phone calls for nearly 24 hours. Sarah? Sarah's mother had obtained a key from the landlord. At that point, my heart was going 90 miles an hour, and I was just petrified. I couldn't see Sarah anywhere. Sarah, Sarah, answer me. Suddenly, Susan Beard heard a rasping noise, like a death rattle coming from the far side of the bed. Sarah? Sarah? I remember calling 911, and, you know, you always hear people say, to be calm and to give directions, and it was so hard to be at all calm. I mean, it was just, it's hard to talk. It was hard not just to be hysterical. 17-year-old Sarah Beard had been raped and beaten, struck in the back of the head with a hammer no fewer than 11 times. Three of the hammer blows had caused skull fractures. Sarah's jaw was also fractured and her inner ear damaged. A nerve in her right eye was ripped. She was rushed into three hours of emergency surgery. The surgery was completed sometime around 1 o'clock in the morning on December 9th. We finally went home around 2 in the morning after talking to the surgeon and got some sleep, called the hospital first thing in the morning, and they said that Sarah had regained consciousness. Sarah could neither speak nor move her arms, but she seemed to be fully aware. In an effort to communicate, her father, Jim Beard, asked Sarah to squeeze his hand when she heard the first letter of his first name. He went through the alphabet. When he reached J, Sarah responded. It was a relief, to, a great relief to, to know that, uh, you know, she was able to communicate on that level. Of course, I was still scared that, uh, you know, I didn't know how much she was going to recover, but that was a, a sign that, uh, well, it was better than, than nothing at that point. Encouraged, Sarah's parents decided to try again. This time, they hoped she would identify her attacker. When I get to the letter, it's the first letter of the name of the person that did this to you. I want you to squeeze my hand. You understand, sweetheart? If you understand, squeeze my hand. That's it, good girl. Now, is it an A? Is it a B, sweetheart? Patiently, Sarah's father went through the alphabet again. By the time he got to the letter R, Sarah had still not squeezed his hand. Jim began to fear that Sarah's earlier response had simply been a fluke, but he kept going. Is it V? Is it a W? It's, it's W. Yeah. She's squeezing my hand. It's W. Yeah. Who, who are her friends that start with W? Um, uh, William. Was, is it Will, honey? Was it Will? No, it's not William. Who else? You know her friends. Who is it? I know. It's, it's Wadada. Wadada? Wadada? Is it Wadada? That's it. It's Wadada. Wadada, the man Sarah had acknowledged as her attacker, was known only by that single name. Wadada was a hanger-on at the University of New Mexico. He fancied himself an artist and sponged off of various students apparently having no livelihood of his own. But police could not press charges on the strength of a hand squeeze. Sarah needed to name her attacker, and no one knew if Sarah would ever speak again. I want you to follow the light. Up, down, okay, great. The whole hospital stay was kind of surreal almost. I mean, here's your childhood. Been just a healthy, normal child with their head shaved and tubes coming out of everywhere and unable to speak. Sarah didn't speak until uh, from December 8th when she was brought into the hospital until Christmas Day. Three weeks after Christmas, 
Albuquerque detective Ernie Rivera interviewed Sarah for the first time. He hit me hard. Now, I know I've asked you before, but I need to hear it one more time. Who hit you, Sarah? Wadada. Wadada? Yes. Good. That's good, Sarah. You did very good. Over the next few weeks, Sarah improved dramatically. She was finally able to relate the details of her attack, at first haltingly, but today in a clear and confident voice. It was towards the end of the semester in school, and I had final projects and stuff to finish, and I was pretty... F actually, I can remember being in a state of a little bit of panic. <laughs> and um, so I was getting ready to, to go over to the university and do some work when he knocked on the door. Hey, Sierra, what are you doing? I'm fine, but um, I was just going to class. Oh, hurt. no, I won't keep you. I won't keep you, man. Okay. Listen, I was wondering if you have one of them small paint brushes. Yeah, sure. Without it, everything that you need is right here. You can borrow any of it. Um, but I'm really sorry. I'm in a big hurry. I have class in 20 oh, minutes. Would Dada ask me where something was or at the University of New Mexico? And I said that I would show him where it was. And, okay. and then... Uh, I turned around to put my shoes on, and that's like when he grabbed me. What are you doing? Don't make a song. Don't make a song. Do everything I tell you. All right? I remember mostly just trying to pass for him, do what he wanted, to get him out of there. Okay. Take off your clothes. No. Just take off your clothes. I don't remember if he said he that he was going to rape me or not, but I mean, I knew he was going to. I just started screaming and banging on the wall and on the floor and kicking everything and um, hoping that, you know, that someone would hear, but I guess that nobody did. And uh, so unfortunately, that, you know, didn't do anything much except for make him, like, really, really mad. And so then he, he did um, kind of I don't know, attack me, hit me, whatever, and... And then he pushed me down on the floor, and he did rape me. Sarah says Wadada was crazed. For 45 minutes, he continued to threaten her, chanting wildly and insisting that Sarah chant with him. Apologize for your sins. Purge yourself. He was trying to get me to to um, apologize for something, you know, or to to accept responsibility for what happened, I guess. I didn't really know what he was trying to ask me or what he wanted me to do, what he wanted me to say. You know, and I was just so scared, and uh, I just felt this huge slam on the other side of my head, and that's it. I never knew what hit me. Sarah Beard lay unconscious and bleeding for nearly 24 hours before her mother found her. Three weeks later, she spoke Wadada's name aloud for the first time. Wadada is between 5 feet 7 and 5 feet 9 inches tall with a thin build. He speaks with an accent that some have described as French Caribbean, others as Ethiopian. He is apparently fluent in Spanish. As this police sketch shows, Wadada's right hand is deformed, the fingers permanently crabbed together in a claw-like shape. Wadada has scars on the palm and back of both hands, and his right arm seems withered. He has used the names Gerald, Jasun, and Anthony Maris, and listed his birthplace as Guyana. He has been known to live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Miami, Florida, and Brooklyn, New York. If you have any information, please contact the Albuquerque, New Mexico Police Department or call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.